What makes your trike great to ride? If you want your trike to be great to ride, you have to care about scrub radius, caster angle, camber, tow, and steering geometry. I've been making trikes for quite a while now, trying to make a good one. And on every iteration, there are small improvements. But in the end, I'm always left wondering, should I have a little bit more caster or less this or that? In this video, I show you how I built this trike and how the geometries can be adjusted to find the best ride. So let's start with the wishbones. We will need to notch these tubes to weld them together. And I also made this jig of wood to make sure everything fits correctly in the end. Yeah, so just machining this part out of wood, the jig, and then I'll put some oil just to protect it, make it nicer. Just show you how the tubes fit there. Actually, after I notched them, but I will show you how I notched them next. Yeah, pretty good fit. So, yeah, it's kind of my notching plate that I made. And uh, as you can see there, I mark the sides so to square the tubes. I'm making a 25 millimeter notch on a 15 millimeter tube and this is uh, just to show you the jigs that I 3d printed to mark the tubes and then I make these bits out of wood to hold the tube in place when I'm notching it because it gets hot and uh, yeah the 3d printed part would just melt if I would do this with a printed, printed part. The next notch is at an angle. It's again a 25mm notch because it fits into a 25mm tube but it's at an angle so I made this part here that I can uh, regulate the angle which I uh, you know, notch. Let's do it. And then finally the last notch that I have to make, I need to change this wheel because it's a 15 millimeter notch, yeah, because the tube interfaces to another tube of its same size, 15 millimeter. I need to, yeah, just, you know, change a few things around in my machine. And also change the angle to the correct one for that notch. All right then. Fast forward a little bit. I just made a bunch of notches on all the tubes that I made. And in the end I finished it by sanding. It's not like perfect out of the grinder. So I'll just make it nicer with some sandpaper. Yeah, that's pretty nice.
All right, let's test it then. You can still see the lines of how I squared it and it fits pretty nicely. So let's get it welded. It's um, quite a little bit of <laughs> grinding after welding. So next we're gonna make the cups for the bearings. I just make holes there because we're gonna put some tubes inside the tubes which will in the end make a cup. And via this hole, hole, I will weld the um, tubes in place. So this is a, that main tube has a 25 millimeter outside and 22 inside. So what I do is a, use a tube that fits there. So with the 22 millimeter outside. And then the bearing has, you know, it's not a press fit as it should, but it's a, it's a pretty tight fit. Some hammering. And yeah, there's, those are the cups that I will weld via the holes that I made. Here it is after welding and grinding. And finally, I'm making this notch there to weld the bolt or the rod that will hold the ball joint and the bolt will allow adjustment of the length of the wishbone. So there you go. Let's weld that. And after some grinding, here it is. And uh, yeah, it's pretty ready. So I'm just prepping it for paint. It's my professional paint booth. Yeah, that looks nice. So let's put the um, bearings in place. And then we'll need this axle for the wishbone to move. This is a eight millimeter rod that I threaded uh, with an M8 thread fits also nicely to the bearings that have an 8 millimeter uh, inside diameter. Yeah. Then what I do to make it um, tight is I use a double nut and uh, once you know it's tight and the bearings can still move I uh, counter, uh, tighten the nuts and then it's in place. I will install the ball joint now and this nut will be used to tighten the ball joint to position. All right, and this is uh, done Wishbone. All right. So these are the four wishbones that the trike needs. I showed how to make one of the wishbones for the lower part, uh, and one is just mir mirrored from the other. 
and the upper wishbones are also kind of the same way of making it but with two differences one it has these arms that i welded here to hold the shock absorbers and the other difference is that they are well shorter and the reason that they're shorter is to keep the scrub radius near zero this is how it's going to be assembled with the knuckle having also that difference in um, length it's going to keep uh, vertical in the rest position all right so now i will show you how to make this disc and the part that holds the wishbones and that allows to change the caster angle So I just received these parts in the mail. They are made of steel and laser cut by PCB Way. The reason why I need these parts to be machine made is because I want the geometry to be very accurate. And uh, PCB Way, they were so kind to offer the parts for the project so thank you very much for the kindness and the very high quality parts and services if you want something manufactured by PCB way all you have to do is go to their website uh, upload your files you get an instant quote and uh, yeah after a few days you get some very high quality parts in the map so let's get these in the drink This will allow to change the caster angle from 0 to 50 degrees with 10 degree increments. And uh, we all need to weld a nut in each of these holes because the part that holds the wishbones will be then bolted. Yeah, like that. So let's get these welded. Yeah, after some welding and grinding, here they are. And this, um, this is the tube that I will use to fit in the frame. And I use these jigs to square it to mark the squares and uh, this these holes here are the holes that i'll use to uh, then tighten to the bike frame it is to be very accurate so i'm just taking a lot of care with the squaring So yeah, that's a hole in the correct place. And I made this, uh, yeah, 3D printed jig so that I make sure that the tube and the plate are in the exact correct place. I will uh, bolt this uh, jig to the um, discs and then the tube will fit there exactly where I want it. The two plates and the tube. Now it's just to make some extra plates to add structural rigidity to the set. Yep, 
Yeah, that's the correct place. I just need to weld that. Everything is in the place it should be. So let's get some welding done. And now, I still don't have these brackets. We'll need to make them out of this three millimeter thick steel and then weld them to the plates that will hold the wishbones. There they are. And this is how the wishbone will be fastened to the plate. We'll just need to weld these brackets to the plates. So let's do that. Yeah, but there's some grinding. Here it is. And this is how it will fit with some bolts. And then we'll be able to shift 10 degrees all the way to 50 degrees to have adjustable camber. So let's make the knuckle, the part that interfaces with the wheel and the wishbones. I'll use these square tubes as the central piece of the knuckle. And I'm making a 12 millimeter hole here. This will be where the wheel ax axle where it will go through. Yeah, two knuckles. And this is the 12 millimeter in diameter rod that I'll use as a wheel axle. Just rounding those tips there. And then threading with an M12 thread. Two axles. Let's hammer them in place there. Boomba boomba. All right, then I'll uh, weld it the nuts. There are M M12 nuts that uh, will be used to secure the wishbones. I welded the axles and that bracket. And I just forgot to make this spacer that is needed to space the wheel hub from the knuckle. So yeah, let's put it there. And also made some trim parts just to make it look nicer out of 3D printed PLA. It's almost the same color. All right, two knuckles finished. That is it. Let's make the wheel hubs. They will have two bearings in the center, hold the disc brake and hold the wheel on the other side. 
So I'm using my CNC machine to mill the aluminium for the hubs. And uh, this is a two-sided job because the bearings fit with a spacer in the middle, so I just made a few holes to that match uh, these pins so that I can change the side and then the bearing on the other side will uh, well, hopefully be in the same spot. Alright, let's secure that and start milling. Many hours of milling here. This is kind of a fast forward of the thing. I'm gonna set this factory to watch a CNC milling machine work. It's done. Let's get it out and just secure it by those tabs that I need to cut out. So we'll sand those off or grind. All right, they're gone. Yeah, so I didn't have a bit of the size that I needed for the, um, the holes that secure the brake discs, so I have to finish this by hand or, you know, by drilling machine. And then I'll thread the M5 threads for the base disc brakes. On the other side, I'll have to make the M8 uh, threads. Uh, because those are you know, the rods that will hold the wheels. It's pretty tight, so I'll um, use a bolt and nut to press that in. Then that's that. Looks cool. So there is a problem. This part had to be milled on both sides because it has a bearing on each side. But uh, with uh, the way I did it, when I turned it, it doesn't um, mill exactly uh, in the same place. So I think I failed by, you know, less than 
millimeter but still the part doesn't work because the bearings are not centered and this just doesn't you know spin correctly actually tried this twice but i noticed there that there's maybe a tenth of a millimeter where it's not exactly in the same place and it's not going to work out so for that reason actually ordered these parts milled from PCBWay I mentioned them earlier in the video because they offered the parts cut of uh, steel so I want to mention this to show that I don't um, go to them just for free stuff uh, they are a very good supplier and these were very well priced and the finish and you know the result is just great so I could not make this I had to order it Let's continue. So let's get these bearings in the same way we've done before on the other ones, on the other hubs. Now the disc brake with M5 bolt. And then I'll just cut these M8 rods to size. These are the ones that will uh, hold the wheels. Yeah, shave that. No, that's nice and round. And we have six rods, three for each wheel. And I'll use some thread lock to bond the threads to the hub so that they yeah this side stays in place and then the side to the wheel that's the one that yeah comes in and out And that is it. That's those are two hubs. All right, now every part is made. It's time to put everything together. So this is the plate again that we can use to adjust the caster angle like that every 10 degrees. Let's start with zero degrees, so like everything else, and then we'll move from there. Let's do the plate exactly the same on the other side. And this part is done. This is the part that will fit into the bicycle frame. Now the knuckles will uh, put them together with the wishbones. That's an M12 thread. As I said before the um, upper wishbone is shorter and the lower wishbone is longer and that's to satisfy the scrub radius that I designed to be near zero at least or zero well i designed to be zero it's going to be near zero yeah that's how the wishbones interface with the knuckle let's put the hub now the wheel hub goes in there and then gets a uh, 12 nut Uh, 
Alright, and once this nut is in, I'll just tighten it, tighten it enough to be, you know, to move easily, but uh, tight. And then I use a counter nut to put it in place so that it doesn't move. It's a little bit of adjustment, and then tightening it together. That's pretty good. That's a done set. Wishbones, knuckle, and hub. And those are the two sets. That's how it will go into the bike. So now we fit the centerpiece into the bicycle frame. Yeah. And then we'll use this hole just to so it doesn't, you know, move around. The wishbones to the center plate. Time lapse the other side. And now we'll fit the shock absorber. Yeah, that's the tilting mechanism. We'll fit the wheels. Yeah, we'll just finish that with the wheel cover, just to make it nice. That's it. All right, the final part is the steering. And this is the steering column that uh, goes from the steering bar. And then I'll just fit, well, some interface parts there. You may be asking yourself why this has three holes, and that's so that I can adjust the steering ratio. Fast forward to putting it in place there. Yeah. And then in the front, I'll have to put another steering pivot there. So these are the cups from a head tube that I cut from another bike and I printed this part so that this fits nicely into yeah this frame extension. So I'll just yeah slide that in from this side and then the yeah the bearing on this side. I'll just put the nut the 
then I 3D printed this part to work as a counter nut there to hold it in place. Uh, yeah, I, I searched the thread and just to share with you that this is a one inch in diameter and that 124 I think it means that is uh, 24 turns per inch. So this is the uh, thread of the fork that I used. And this is the final part in the steering, made of this um, square tube. All right, those are the, where the wheel attaches to. I was making this at night. I just had to check if it fits. So here's a here's my work setup. Yeah, this tarp keeps things possible for working. And yeah, let's try that on. <laughs> That's pretty good. It works. Yeah, and after some finishing with paint, Just, let's put that in place. Yeah, that's the adjustment to the bracket so that I can change the angle of the position of this arm when I change the angle of the caster. Yeah. That looks good. This part will um, interface this steering pivot with the uh, wheel uh, steering links that we just saw. Piece of trim to make it nicer. And then, yeah, I decided to make um, guides that are perfectly squared so that I, when I assemble the steering, I know if things are straight or at how much angle. I'm just setting this very well so that my steering is as correct as I can make it. And these parts are the steering links. They're made of two and eight millimeter rods that I welded in place. And they'll have these ball joints to interface the steering pivot with the, with the wheels. And I can adjust the length via these bolts as well. So there it is, two steering links that I'm going to now put in place and make sure that it's at parallel to the frame. And this is how I do it. I just do the length until it looks parallel. So this is actually zero degrees toe angle. And finally, the part that will connect the steering bar with, you know, the front steering pivot. Put it in there.
that's it it's done everything is put together Now I'll be doing some tests and adjustments to find the ideal geometry. I will test how well the trike drives straight, fast and slow, how well it turns, and some rough riding to test stability. So I can adjust caster via this plate here. During my short experiments I already decided to increase from 0 to 10 degrees it was feeling a little bit twitchy and uh, this has improved it uh, i can increase it all the way to 50 degrees so i'll see with experiments uh, what's best i can adjust camber via these threads here i can create positive or negative camber uh, just by uh, increasing and decreasing the length of these four arms. I can adjust toe uh, via changing the length of the steering links. Uh, with these screws I can uh, make them shorter or longer and create toe in or toe out. I can also change the steering ratio so how much angle the wheels turn per how much uh, angle of the steering bar. In the next video I'll explain all the tests and the results and the measurements of all the settings that I decided was the best. Also I'll uh, explain how I designed for a small scrub radius and uh, the design aspects of the Ackerman geometry. To finish this video, I'll leave you with some footage of the initial tests. I hope you enjoy. So I'll see you in the next video. Or you'll see me in the next video. Bye-bye. <coughs>